สวัสดีครับตาจ้าหาวอัปปากาบาร์แอนอันยงฮาเซโอ What if I told you that learning a new language could make you tens of millions of dollars? No, let's make that potentially billions of dollars. Today we're going to do a deep dive into the languages of La Lisa, aka Lisa, aka Lisa Blackpink, aka ปราณปรียามโนบาน aka น้องปอกแป๊ก And in the spirit of following in the footsteps of Lisa, you're going to see me in this clip try my hand at learning Korean to try and get in the shoes of Lisa and see just how hard it was to learn Hangul or the Korean language. So the next one, so that would be Odia Sarayo. Yeah, Odia Sarayo. Sarayo. Okay, Odia Sarayo. Yeah, your pronunciation is really good. I'm going to analyze the different language specimens I could find out there, both from the early days of speaking a language and see how she's actually changed her language over time. And for Korean, because I'm not a Korean speaker, I've called in the expert help of Professor Crystal Kim to analyze Lisa's Korean and tell me through the ears of a native Korean speaker what she thinks about Lisa's Korean. I was actually shocked about what she told me about Lisa's Korean, so stay tuned. So, how many languages can Lisa speak? Kun Lisa, ni put dai ki p a s a na. Ni zhen de hui jiang ji zhong yu yan. What? Are you testing me? Speak Thai because I'm Thai. I'm Korean. English. A little bit English. What? A little bit. bit. She's good at it. Yeah, and a little bit Japanese. So how can languages actually make you money? Well, I can tell you if you're just interpreting or you're teaching languages, yeah, that's great. It's fun, but it's not going to make you the big bucks. The big bucks come from being able to connect with the audiences that speak those languages, and then through a variety of ways, there is revenue potential that goes into the billions of dollars. So as you're thinking about the revenue potentials, I want you to think of somebody like Kim Kardashian or Kendall Jenner. Now I know probably there are some people out there screaming, saying, "Don't compare Lisa to those people." But there's a reason why I'm doing that. So let's have a look. First of all, the basic foundation of who Lisa is. She was a dancer, a singer, and rapper. So she has the entertainment side. That's very similar to what we see with the Kardashians or Kendall Jenner. They had the show, The Kardashians, and that. Formed the foundation, this base point that they started off from, but it grew from there. It became much, much more. So for Lisa, it was actually a big thing to get to that point because originally she was just another Thai kid. She went to a bilingual school, but I can tell you the bilingual schools here in Thailand—they don't get you speaking English all of the time. Some do, but they don't get you speaking like a native speaker of English. The international schools that do cost a lot, lot more money. But I've never seen a real bilingual school here in Thailand that produces native speakers of English yet. When you listen to Lisa's English now, especially in her latest clip, Rockstar. I can hardly tell the difference. Actually, I can't tell that she's not a native speaker of English. So what happens here in Thailand with a lot of artists? They get trapped in this golden performer cage within Thailand, and in Thailand we call it go into when they actually break out of that and go international. And very, very few manage to actually break out and go into. You've had people like Tata Young who, in the past, have been able to do that, but very few are going to go into. But Lisa, if you have a look at what she did and when she auditioned, then it's like she had trained her entire. A childhood to get to this point to be able to break out of this Thai golden cage and go into where at the age of I think it was 16 she auditioned and got into the YG group in Korea. So that was the first big thing: her ability not only to dance and perform because you get a lot of people who can dance and perform, but connect with an international audience and the YG group who were admittedly. A Korean group. They weren't a Western American group, but they saw the value in that, and so they took her on and took her over to South Korea. 
When Lisa arrived in Korea, she's told in different interviews about the real struggle that she had with the Korean language. So how tough was learning Korean for Lisa? I want to jump into the waters too and try my hand at learning Korean. And thanks to this clip's sponsor, italki, I have the perfect opportunity to do so with one of the best Korean teachers on their platform, Professor Crystal Kim. As a linguist and lifetime language learner, I've always been fascinated about the ability to connect through language. So the next one, so that would be 어디에 살아요? 어디에 살아요? 어디에 살아요? 어디에 살아요? 어디에 살아요? 어디에 살아요? Yeah, your pronunciation is really good. So there is one rule that, uh, like, if, if the syllables start with this circle and that the previous syllable has final consonant, and then it, these can... final consonants are always carried. Italki makes this possible by offering personalized lessons from over 30,000 professional teachers around the globe. So what does that actually mean? Well, for me, rather than just buying a book or a static course that teaches you a language through just English or just one language, which can sometimes be kind of clunky, I was blown away by italki's teacher network, where you can find native speaking teachers of the language that you're learning who are also fluent in other languages, which gives me an extra dimension to my language learning. It helps me leverage my existing knowledge and language skills to improve both my listening and my speaking. Mm -hmm. So this chonun, so I've actually been listening to your aspiration. So this is actually your... I've been trying to figure out where your throat is activated. So whether you're just starting out or looking to refine your skills, italki provides a platform tailored to your learning style and goals. I'm thrilled to be learning Korean with Italki's professor Crystal Kim. Hello, I'm Crystal and I'm a native Korean teacher. So I've been working for Italki almost for four years. And yeah, I speak Korean of course. <laughs> I was born and raised in Seoul and I speak English, Spanish and a bit French. She's a skilled Italki teacher who understands the intricacies of language learning and with her expertise in Korean, K-pop and multilingual education, she's helping me navigate the nuances of Korean pronunciation and prosody. And for any of my long-term followers out there, you know, prosody for me is king. 저는 사업가예요. 저는 사업가예요. Crystal also speaks Spanish, which I also do, so that's great. Where sometimes phonetic sounds or articulation may not have equivalence in English, but they may be there in Spanish, so learning becomes a lot more easy and relevant. Lisa's linguistic journey is not just about mastering languages. It's about connecting to audiences worldwide. Hey, 안녕하세요. Blackpink의 리사입니다. 뭔가 좀 저의 본다야보다 좀더 업그레이드 되는 되게 저의 멋있는 혼자 아닙니다. 저는 달곰이랑 오늘 살짝 태국 라면 먹고 싶다. 태국 과자 엄마가 사는 되게 초와 지금 달라진 것과 변하지 않은 것이 있다면 데뷔 초? So with insights from an italki native Korean teacher, Professor Crystal, I'm exploring how Lisa's command of Korean has evolved over time, and this gives us a deeper appreciation of her talent. So this is like her like debut, right? Debut, yeah, when she debut. So uh, I think like if I see her just sentence, just if I see the subtitle and her uh, word, is, it's just literally Korean. It's very mature. But when I hear her uh, pronunciation, I can tell she's foreign. What are some of the things that tell you she's foreign? And did you notice so, any difference between the earlier ones and the other ones? Or was it pretty much the same for each one? The first one, sec I, I mean, the, maybe when she introduced herself, like the first or sen second sentence, she pronounced like actually like a baby. Hey, 안녕하세요. Blackpink, Lisa입니다. Uh, 그동안 함께 해온 멤버들과 데뷔를 하게 되어서 너무 떨리고 기대돼요. 오늘 공개되는 휘파람 몬바야 많이 들어주시고 블랙핑크도 많이 사랑해 주세요. 감사합니다. I mean, not, I mean, I'm not saying the weird baby, but you know, when the woman talk in a cute way, sometimes they, their pronunciation is a bit different than the standard one, right? 
she's not really confident to say. So that's mm. why her pronunciation is a, a bit like me. But the second one is like she's already confident to enough confident to say like native. 그게 초와 지금 갈라진 것과 변하지 않은 것이 있다면 데뷔 초? <웃음> 7년 전인데 제 볼살이 좀 빠진 것 같아요. <웃음> 그때 진짜 되게 엄청 베이비 페이스였는데. So the second one, if I don't know her, then and then if I don't see the screen, then I cannot distinguish if she's Korean or. So are you ready to embark on your language journey? Click on the link in the description and start learning with italki. Don't forget to use my exclusive promo code to get $5 off your first lesson when you spend $10. But hurry, the offer is limited to the first 50 users. Now let's continue exploring Lalisa's incredible linguistic evolution. Now I know there are a lot of language learners out there who really enjoy learning the language and really don't care how they sound just as long as they can communicate in the language it's going to be good enough but for lisa that wasn't good enough because of her foreignness in south korea she experienced a lot of racism and discrimination over there so she knew that it was in her best interest to develop prosody in Korean. You heard Professor Crystal Kim when she did her analysis of Lisa's Korean. She said in the early days she spoke kind of baby Korean, not meaning in an insulting way, but she lacked confidence and she used the mannerisms and the vocabulary of a child. And this had a subconscious effect on the Korean people and the way that she could connect with them. So Lisa really pushed herself over the years to now that Professor Kim, now I don't know because I'm not a Korean speaker, but she says when she listens to Lisa's Korean now and she closes her eyes, she can't tell the difference between a Korean and Lisa. The potential power of fitting in and what could be done with that within Korean society was the motivator to really, really push Lisa forward to develop her Korean skills. And of course, she was living Korean day in, day out. She had Korean roommates. Everything she did would have been in Korean. So naturally, she developed this natural prosody. Prosody is the natural rhythms of the language in Korean. And so if we have a look at people like the Kardashians or Kendall Jenner, they have their production, which would be the equivalent to Lisa's music, but then they have these other ventures that they go out. Now, Lisa, she's broken away and she started her own talent group called Loud. That's with two L's. And so while the Kardashians or Kendall Jenner, those ventures go into fashion, beauty, modeling. If you look at Lisa, hers goes into music and then fashion and potentially acting. We see that Lisa is going to appear in the upcoming season of White Lotus, the hit series with the third season having been shot in Thailand and Lisa appeared in that. So you have music, you have drama and television movies and for Lisa you also have fashion. These alone could be worth tens of millions if not hundreds of millions of dollars in the next couple of years. And then of course you have the sponsorship deals or as Lisa calls it, Repin. And Lisa has deals that just eclipse those potentially. Why? Because not only has Lisa been able to connect with the markets in the West, like Kim and Kendall, but because of her language, she can connect with the markets right across Thailand, in Korea, in China, in Japan. And now in the West, she's broken out of this K-pop mold and she's gone for the mainstream rap pop music mold, which basically opens her up to the entire planet. But this wouldn't be one of my clips unless we go and do a language analysis. And so I'm going to jump into a couple of specimens of Lisa's languages and I'm going to point some things out for you to notice, both from the early days and then the later days of her speaking the language. And also where I predict that she may be going, because especially say on her English, I can see some changes and I can see where it's actually headed. What? I want you to listen to that. Now, Lisa is a hundred zillion percent native Thai speaker. You know she's grown up as a Thai kid. Have a listen to these sounds. It's not k, k, 
like we hear in English. And many foreigners, when they learn Thai, they make this mistake thinking it's like a K in English, but it's not. Have a listen to these really soft sounds on her Thai because she's a native Thai speaker. You hear this. So this is 100% native Thai. A polite Thai voice is very soft and very smooth, and people are encouraged to speak like that. So she's very well spoken in Thai, but you can tell that these are still her early years. So these first clips from Chinese are in her early days. Okay, so I want us to have a listen to that. Let's listen again. Okay, so here she said, but you can hear this Thai-ness because there's a thing in Thai when Thai speak Chinese, and especially Mandarin, we have this letter and it's it's an unaspirated t. And so what happens both ZH in pinyin and Z in pinyin and sometimes even C, I, C, E in pinyin all become this zhuozhan in Thai. So we can hear her say in these early Chinese instead of qing chun zhi zuo ren men, she says qing chun zhi zuo zhi zuo zhi zuo, this zhuo 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 is used for all of them which isn't the actual sound in Chinese. It should be zhi zuo. But she says, this is a typical Thai thing when Thais speak Mandarin. Okay, so she said instead of this time, she said, you can see this, it's a very Thai way of speaking Mandarin. This influence has obviously come because she's probably just started learning and she has all of these base Thai things around her Chinese or what Thais think of Mandarin. Okay, that was actually not too bad. I want to be your coach or your mentor. A lot of Thais have problems saying the word shi. It might come out as si or something more frontal. So she's obviously put a bit of effort into that before she said that. She's learned her shi. Okay, so she's actually getting better there. You can see her tones are actually pretty much on point. And she said like, that's actually pretty clear. I hear a lot of Thais, they pronounce this incorrectly, but she's had coaching on her Chinese. And so now we're going to get into her more recent Chinese. And you can hear a real difference in those early days to now. Okay, so you can hear a marked improvement. It's still not perfect. So this for a Thai, this is super, super difficult to say. It's difficult for some native Chinese speakers to say the difference between zhi and zi, depending on where you're coming from in China. But have a listen to how she said it. It actually gets better compared to those early days in speaking Mandarin. Okay, so she's still not getting the tsi tsi. It's zhe tsi, zhe tsi. So there's still a little bit of improvement that's needed on this, but it's getting better than those early days of speaking Chinese. So there's still this mix up between zhi and zi, but again, if you go to Taiwan, you'll hear that these sounds mix together, or even in Hong Kong because of Cantonese. So this is maybe more of a southern thing, but I'd say for Lisa, it's still this influence of Thai on her Mandarin, because this is something I hear a lot of Thais do when they're speaking Mandarin these days. So we've looked at her Korean, we've looked at her Chinese, let's look at her Japanese. I'm not a fluent Japanese speaker, but just listening to those clips there and listening to the way that she's spoken Japanese, yeah, she's not fully, fully fluent, but look at her body language, listen to her prosody, her intonation. She's got those Japanese things down over her language. Now, whether she's intentionally learned these or observed them, 
or this is just the nature of her being able to absorb these. It's just amazing. And it's these things that are going to potentially make her billions of dollars. It's all of that metadata, the prosody, the body language, the tone of voice that's going to speak to the audience when she's speaking in Japanese or whatever language it is that she's speaking. It enables her to connect and that makes Lisa then super, super attractive to any sponsor that wants to tap into that market. For any Japanese speakers out there, have a listen to her Japanese and let me know in the comments what you think of her Japanese. And so finally, we're going to look at her English. Speak Thai because I'm Thai. I'm Korean. English. A little bit English. Not a little Japanese. bit. She's good at it. Nah, and a little bit Japanese. Okay, so we can hear her English, of course, is very, very good. Almost native. There are a few things that give her away. Tells here a little bit English. Now, if you're a native English speaker, you'd say a little bit of English. And this is something that you see not only in Thailand, but across the region. So if you said, I speak a little English, you'd say, Pudai Nitnoi, Nitnoi, I speak little. And they joke around speaking English, saying, I speak little, little English, Nitnoi. And in Vietnamese, in Indonesian, sedikit, sedikit aja, little, little. When joking around in English as a non-native speaker, they don't say it as the native speakers would say. And so I don't know if Lisa's putting this on for the Asian audience or it's the way that she would really say it. It's, a, it's almost 10 years already that we're living together. At first, I can't really speak. Something really interesting here that we're living together. And this is something that I've noticed with uh, her English, maybe it's something coming from a bilingual school in Thailand, but I hear an overpronounced er in her early specimens of English. Now, I'm an Australian speaker, so we don't have this rotal er at the end of words, but Lisa has it, and it's very characteristic of some of the middle level bilingual international schools in Thailand where it's a tell that you're not a native speaker. So you can have it here. Listen for the er. Almost 10 years already. That years, we years. Together. And you notice years. This is another characteristic of the non-native speaking English, which I see being changed now in her later English. The vocalization, so the voicing of z versus s. So if I say years, years, as a native English speaker, you can hear the z, years, because R activates the voice, year, and so that carries on to the S to turn the S into a Z. So it's not years, it's years, or as an American, maybe years, years, but you still get the z, but you can hear on Lisa's English that the S is not voiced and so that again is a tell that she's not a native speaker of English. It's, a, it's almost 10 years already that we're living together. At first I can't really speak uh, the language. Okay, at first I can't, you hear this can, 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 if it were a native English speaker, but can still is this short vowel, which of course it's 100% understandable to a native English speaker, but it's a little tell to show that she wasn't a native English speaker, say, grown up in the West. Usually for me. Okay, so again, here we have again this de-voicing instead of usually, it's usually, usually. This is a tell of non-native speaking English. Usually for me to just like contain my my energy, um, I used to sleep a lot. If you have time, you should sleep. Now, one thing I'd like to mention here is the rest of her language. If you just close your eyes, she's a native speaker of English. Now, if you, if you, if you notice how the prosody and these sounds are just connecting naturally, this is something that doesn't really happen with native Thai speakers of English for many of them. Why? Because in Thai, as there is with Southern Chinese and many languages across Southeast Asia, there's a tendency to stop the throat, this glottal stop. So if I said in Thai, he doesn't want to go. My throat's closing off almost on every key syllable. And this is why 
you hate the Thai people speak English. You hate the throat cut cut off because the throat's got this natural tendency to cut off. You also hear it with many Cantonese speakers and people across Singapore, Malaysia, that you have this glottal stop happening. But if you listen to Lisa's English, she's lost that. She has really normal, fluid language because in English, if I said he wanted to go, he wanted to go, what happens is you've got pressure starting here. He wanted to go, and it only finishes at the end of the sentence. Whereas if I said that in English, he wanted to go. He wanted to go. My throat's cutting off at each syllable. Listen to her again. Usually, for me, to just like contain my my energy, um, I used to sleep a lot. If you have time, you should sleep. Yeah. If you have time, you should sleep. It's all done in one breath. If you have time, you should sleep. Instead of if you have time, you should sleep. One thing I noticed with Lisa, though, even till today, she's still got this, and you can hear that she can say it, but very often it comes up as d. That's actually though coming through into her rap as a good thing now in English because it's kind of sounding more authentic that maybe she's from the U.S. and that's just the way that she speaks. What? Are you testing me? Um. There is one actually. Um, girls dance usually incorporate a lot of wave moves. Okay, so this is one tell too from Thai. Girls dance usually incorporates would be the normal English. What you notice, even with very very fluent English speakers from Thailand, the cutting off because the throat cuts off. Final s's, especially if they come after consonants, so incorporate. Normally, the syllable would stop at the T, incorporate. So if there's an S there, incorporate. That's a very unnatural movement for a native Thai speaker. And so when learning English, many Thai speakers need to consciously push that S at the end. But if you're not consciously doing it, even after many, many years of speaking English, and you might use it in your everyday life, it could still go missing. Have a listen again. Incorporate a lot of wave moves. The main point is to look good and attractive on stage. I would like to announce my first mentor mission: the Wave Challenge. Hi, Rolling okay. Stone. Okay, and so you hear there again. Instead of wave getting this voiced, it's still losing a bit of voicing, so it sounds like wave. The Wave Challenge instead of the Wave Challenge, but you know what she means. I'm Lisa, and this is the first time. I think I was like 13. I came with my. Mom and dad, my family, and I had super short hair, like a boy. <laughs> yeah, and that was my first time in Korea. And so again, you hear her English, ninety nine point nine 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 percent native, and it's fascinating going into her rock star clip now and listening to the way that she says sitting. She does something with her language that I haven't really heard from American English until just recently. I'm noticing more people do it. Have a listen. Tell me what you think it is. Gold teeth sitting on a dash. She a rock star. Gold teeth sitting on the dash. But listen to this. Gold teeth sitting on the dash. Sitting, sitting on the dash. Now I know there are English purists out there would be horrified to hear this from American English sitting on the dash. But I've seen this happening with other people. This glottal stop over T's of North American speakers from both Canada and the U.S. So again, this is just testament to Lisa's ability to adapt her language and just continuously modify it and enhance it into a version of the language that sits natively. Even though there are tells on her language, but, but it does sit very well with native speakers of the language, and this is happening across her Korean, across her English, her Chinese is getting much better, and you can tell me about her Japanese, but you can see even through the body language and the flow, the pitch of her language, it's very normal to the native speakers, which is potentially worth billions. So I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope that it's a real inspiration for you to learn languages as well. Thank you for your support. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and hit the bell. I'm Stuart J. Raj. I'll see you on the other side.